Stone Sour, Buse, take one. Ouch. No, no. I mean, essentially, it was just kind of you know, trying to make sure that the the songs flowed, but at the same time, it fit with how the story was going. You know, I mean, essentially, it was just about getting the right arrangement and making sure that the music really felt like it was flowing into one another, and then kind of doing a little, uh, uh, you know, kind of rewriting and, and punching up here and there just to make sure that it was all staying in line. But I mean, essentially, it was pr it was pretty easy to make sure that it, it all felt. You know, natural, and that it was heading in the right direction. Uh, it was never the plan, honestly. It just naturally happened that way. Um, Cause really, we didn't know what the sequence saying would be till towards the end yeah. of yeah. recording, anyway. Um, so it just it just happened to play out like that as far as the the different instrumentation a little bit more of that on part two than one. Yeah, yeah, we just kind of hit it, it, you know, whatever was on the slate, that's what we did, you know. We just kind of tried to get the meat of everything first, and then uh, and then just go back in and kind of add the the little spice here and there, you know, the ear candy and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think doing it all at once, it gave it that same that same energy, you know, and that same kind of urgency and and uh, the same kind of uh, exuberance that we wanted with the music. You know, we wanted it to have that kind of live feel, but at the same time, have those layers that really paint the picture for you in your head, you know, and really kind of show off what we were trying to accomplish. He's Canadian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, two totally different styles, um, you know, with Dave, Dave was uh, in some ways a drill sergeant to a degree as far as scheduling and following the schedule. I mean, we had a, you know, uh, this, what, we had like three months with the hard deadline with, with the Slipknot tour, so there, there was no going over the timeline. Um, so, you know, he basically uh, charted out what needed to be done. And, and to, you know, everybody else in the band, I mean, it's credit, you know, we had to follow that and, and really work hard. I mean, there was days, I mean, I was pretty much out there for almost every bit of it. Yeah. And uh, there was days where he would do 12, 14 hours, you know, he would be, I would get up in the morning because there was rooms for several of us in the studio and he would already be eating breakfast, doing editing at 10 o'clock with us starting at noon. So he would do two hours of editing and then record up to dinner, which was like eight or nine, and then go back to editing until like midnight. And he did that like six days a week um, for three months to be able to pull this off and, and uh, you know, Nick was a little bit more um, bouncy. Yeah, <laughs> Nick's a Nick's a character, man. You know, like he's just you know he's kind of he's a huge fan. You know, so he gets really into it. You know, and he's even got a lot of energy and whatnot. And uh, so so the approach is right there are different. You know, but I think from a producer standpoint, they both are kind of going for the same thing. You know, they want you to have the best experience and the best album that you could possibly you know record. So. Um, you know, Dave was very efficient, you know, he was really good at balancing time and, and, and getting great takes and great performances out of us, you know, and I think we, honestly, I think we thrived on that schedule, you know, because we're not a band that likes to sit around waiting to figure out what we're going to do, you know, I think when we have a schedule and we're on and we're trying to accomplish something, especially as big as this, we really rose to the occasion because we knew exactly what needed to be done. And I think because of that, we were able to kind of go above and beyond and really accomplish more than we thought we were going to.